Most of what we know about history is due to the commendable efforts of archaeologists. These people work tirelessly to uncover mysteries and collect the beautiful artifacts we only read about in history books. However, even an honorable profession such as archaeology has recorded significant errors you wouldn't believe could occur. Today on Crunch, we'll be talking about 10 of the most interesting mistakes in the history of archaeology. Egyptian Queen in Spain? In 1850, a group of workers in Tarragona, Spain discovered a marble sarcophagus with unusual inscriptions. An antiquarian and archaeologist named Bonaventura Hernández y Sanauja claimed the inscriptions illustrated the story of Hercules opening the Strait of Gibraltar. The inscription showed Hercules standing with his legs wide apart with a zodiac arching over his head, breaking apart two boulders as other people approached him from different directions. These inscriptions match the well-known stories about Hercules. According to Sanauja, the people in the inscription were coming from Egypt. He believed that the Hyksos were pursued by the Egyptians all the way to Spain, and as shown by the inscriptions, the Hyksos traveled with their belongings and animals. Sanuha believed the discovery of this Egyptian-style sarcophagus in Spain was proof. However, many scholars disagreed with this theory, which was dismissed and forgotten. Nebraska – The Origin of Our Species For many years, scientists have built upon the theory of evolution which Charles Darwin put forward. This theory summarized that every species evolved from a pre-existing species. According to scientists, man evolved from apes. However, they believed another species was the link between man and apes. In 1916, Harold Cook, a geologist, discovered the fossil of a single tooth in Nebraska. After five years of studying it, he sent it to Henry Fairfield Osborne. The latter was a paleontologist and, at the time, president of the American Museum of Natural History. After further studies with other experts in the field, Osborne described the tooth as 100% anthropoid. He concluded that it was the last right upper molar tooth of a higher primate, which he called Hesperopithecus harocochii, the long-sought bridge between men and apes. Osborne stipulated that the tooth belonged to North America's first anthropoid ape, which dated back to the Pliocene epoch a time scale that extended from 5.3 million to 2.6 million years ago. This long-anticipated discovery revealed that mankind may have originated from Nebraska, North America. In 1926, researchers returned to the site where Cook had found the tooth and uncovered remains, which came from an extinct species of peccary known as Prosthenopsaurus, an animal that wasn't even a primate. Marcel Imboul described this embarrassing occurrence as a lesson for paleontologists with too vivid an imagination. Vikings in America There have been theories that Vikings once fully colonized North America. In Minnesota, a small community called Kensington is known for having attracted a considerable number of Vikings in the early 1800s, and many believed an alleged discovery in this town proves this. In 1898, a Swedish farmer claimed to have found a stone slab on his land which bore runic inscriptions, a type of lettering used across northern Europe, most especially by the Vikings. Experts were quick to interpret this runic text, and it reads, 8 Goths and 22 Norwegians, on an exploration journey from Vinland to the west, we had camped by two skerries one day's journey north from this stone. We were out to fish. One day after we came home, we found ten men red of blood and dead. AVM, Ave Maria, save us from evil. We have ten men by the sea to look after our ships 14 days travel from this island, in the year 1362. This Kensington runestone is considered a fake for a couple of reasons. First, why would Vikings who had set up camp and lost some of their numbers to a raid carve a message on a stone that they obviously intended to abandon before heading back to their ships? Who did they expect to read it? And what would have been the purpose of leaving the message? Black Market Mummy In 2000, Pakistani authorities discovered a strange artifact that was put up for sale on the black market – a mummy. Local archaeologists studied the mummy and claimed it was an Egyptian-style female mummy dating back to approximately 600 BC. The mummy, which was buried in a wooden coffin, wore a face mask, a gold crown, and a breastplate inscribed with the words, I am the daughter of the great King Xerxes. 
On the wooden sarcophagus, there were cuneiform inscriptions from ancient Persia, including images of Ahura Mazda, the creator of Zoroastrianism. These clues led the archaeologists to believe it was the mummy of an ancient Persian princess. When proper tests were conducted, the results revealed that the coffin was only 250 years old. And the Persian princess was actually a young woman who was killed in her 20s a few years earlier. The Runama Runes In the 12th century, Scandinavian scholars discovered a dike in Belkinga, Sweden. They believed the dike was inscribed with letters that had become illegible over time, and they believed it was the work of Vikings who were known for their barbaric behavior. Since nobody could make sense of these inscriptions, they were soon forgotten. These inscriptions remained a mystery until the 18th and 19th centuries, when archaeologists became interested in this dike again. Finner Magnusson, a professor of archaeology at the University of Copenhagen, decided to inspect the carvings hoping to pick up something earlier scholars may have missed. Soon after his study, Magnusson claimed to have deciphered the inscriptions on the dike. According to him, they were runic inscriptions which was a poem praising King Harald Wartooth for his bravery at the Battle of Bravala. This bold proclamation was believable because at the time, Magnusson was considered one of Europe's leading experts on Old Norse literature and runes. So, his discovery was lauded as a restoration of a long-lost part of history, especially because little was known about the Battle of Bravala. A few years later, Swedish scientist Jans Jutko Berzelius studied the dike and his discovery shamed Magnusson's theory. The inscriptions were not runes or even inscriptions of any kind. They were natural cracks and fissures in the dike. Magnusson's reputation never recovered from this unfortunate occurrence. The Cobway Neanderthal Skull Neanderthals are an extinct species that scientists believe to be one of the closest to men. They were discovered in the 1800s but existed between 40,000 and 400,000 years ago and were the most sophisticated primate to exist, second only to men. They wore clothes they made themselves, utilized a wide range of sophisticated tools, were skilled hunters and ate plant-based meals. Most interestingly, there is evidence that this species intentionally buried their dead and marked out graves with stones and flowers. The British Museum in London holds the skull of a Neanderthal excavated in 1921 at Cobway in present-day Zambia. This skull, which dates back 38,000 years, has a hole about 8 millimeters in diameter on its left side. On the right side of the skull, the parietal bone is completely shattered as though the skull blew up from inside. This led scholars to believe the hole resulted from a gunshot, and they came up with two theories. Either rifles existed in Africa 40,000 years ago, or the skull belonged to another species that lived in more recent centuries. A study conducted on the skull in 1921 showed that the hole was not the cause of death, since the edges of the hole had begun to heal and chances of surviving a gunshot to the brain are incredibly slim. It was then discovered that the hole was caused by a bacterial infection of the soft tissue over the bone, and the individual died from an abscess or an ulcer that had become septic. Drake's Legendary Plate of Brass In the late 1570s, British explorer Sir Francis Drake performed the world's second circumnavigation. On his three-year quest, he marked a spot in North America for the British government and according to the journal of one of his sailors, Sir Drake left behind a plate made of brass to mark the spot, which is present-day Point Reyes in California. This brazen plate has been popularly sought after by historians interested in the early colonization of North America, and Herbert Eugene Bolton was one of them. In 1973, Bolton claimed to have found this historical treasure and after subjecting the plate to electrochemical tests, it was approved as genuine. And for about 40 years, it was kept as one of California's most valuable historical pieces. Some critics expressed how they thought the plate was a fake and its inscriptions were too modern. However, since it passed an authenticity test, their criticism wasn't paid enough attention until more modern tests proved the plate was a fake. It took 30 years before the identity of the people behind the forgery was discovered. A man, Ezra Dane, was allegedly the man behind the ruse, but unfortunately at the time, most of the conspirators had passed. The Bridge Between Man and Ape Still, about the search for this mystery species that linked man and apes, in 1912, British amateur archaeologist Charles Dawson claimed to have found the species. 
Understandably, the paleontology world was excited at this discovery, but unknown to them, it was about to be the biggest hoax in science history. Dawson wrote to London's Natural History Museum claiming to have found the skull fragments of the species in Piltdown, Sussex. Together with Arthur Smith Woodward, a preeminent paleontologist, they reconstructed the skull of this supposed early human. They presented the fossils to the Geology Society of London and claimed they belonged to an early primate from about 500,000 years ago, called Eoanthropus dawsoni. As expected, their long work was celebrated and rewarded. However, this special recognition did not last long. In the coming decades, more scientists discovered fossils of early humans that didn't complement the Piltdown Man theory, leading to Dawson's research being investigated. In 1953, it was discovered that the Piltdown Man was actually a fake made by carefully piecing bones from humans and apes together. Unlike the Nebraska Man, which was a mistake, the Piltdown Man theory was planned deception put together by Dawson himself. The Holly Oak Pendant in 1889, American archaeologist Hilborn T. Cresson presented an interesting artifact which he called the Holly Oak Pendant. It was made from a shell on which a mammoth was engraved. At the time, mammoths had been extinct in North America for centuries, so the discovery of this pendant would have had undeniable significance. Despite the magnitude of this discovery, it was dismissed as a likely forgery. First, Cresson was not particularly a morally upright man. He had been fired from previous positions for stealing artifacts and secretly selling them to private collectors. Second, Cresson claimed that he had found the pendant 25 years earlier but didn't realize its value, so he didn't turn it in immediately. His excuse was most unlikely for an archaeologist, so the pendant was seized from him, locked away, and completely forgotten. Later in the 20th century, scientists picked up interest in the pendant again. And in 1988, radiocarbon tests confirmed that the pendant was 1,100 years old, although nothing was said about its authenticity. The Calaveras Skull In 1866, Josiah Whitney made an interesting geological discovery to the world, a skull that he believed belonged to an early hominid species. Although Whitney was not an archaeologist, he was a renowned geologist and a professor of geology at Harvard University. He was one of America's best scientists, so his attempt at archaeology was given more audience than an amateur usually got. This skull was discovered by miners under a layer of lava at least 130 feet below ground, and Whitney named it the Calaveras Skull, which he claimed to have been one million years old. About 30 years later, archaeologist William H. Holmes dismissed Whitney's discovery as a ruse because, according to him, the skull's features were too modern. Carbon dating later confirmed that the skull was only a thousand years old. After further investigation, it was revealed that the miners planted it intending to make Whitney look stupid. Fortunately, this archaeological flop was not a huge dent in his reputation. He even had monuments named after him. Thanks for watching Crunch History, and as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more interesting facts about the past.